Hello world, it's Craig. Today we're going to look at S100 backplanes. I recently changed the design for the boards that I use, so I have some extras of this backplane that I'm going to be giving away. Now, this one over here is pretty much the standard S100 board that you'd have available today if you want to build a backplane. It's the Andrew Lynch boards. You can find these on the S100computers.com website. The build files, you can download them. And there's a number of people that make these available for sale for a reasonable price. So I don't know if the world needs another version, but some time ago I started to make my own S100 backplanes for my own use, and I made changes to them to suit my preference. And then I did a second version of it a year or two ago, and this is that 0.2 version. So the first thing that I changed on this was the fusing. If you look at the Lynch board, they use these little Pico fuses, and even on these Pico fuses, you can see that I put them in little sockets because you know there's always new and exciting ways to blow the fuses out, and I didn't want to have to resolder those. So I replaced those little Pico fuses with these little blade fuses. You know, they're readily available, they're cheap. And a nice thing about them is that I can read the rating right off it. And so I can change the rating of that fuse as I, you know, if I'm first starting out with a board, I'll have a, a very small rating fuse in it. And as I get more confidence with that little project, whatever I'm working on, I can increase the current rating of that fuse. The next thing that I changed on this is it has to do with some of the absolute obsolete signals. You can see on this board, I had to jerry-rig something up here for the protect and unprotect, you know, lines uh, 20 and 70, I think. So on my board, I brought these out to more formal jumpers. There's jumpers down here and then over here for some of these obsolete signals that a lot of the cards that I'm using are, you know, very early cards and they use those obsolete signals. So those come out to headers that I can uh, adjust those jumpers. The other thing I added is there's some five volts in ground here that's always handy to have, have uh, that available. Now, I didn't worry about maintaining the footprint of this. You notice this has uh, Altair holes in it. If you wanted to mount this in an Altair, I wasn't even concerned at all about maintaining the footprint. So all the Altair, Altair holes are gone and I just have four hole mounting holes in the corners. On my board, I did bring out the bus signals out here so I don't have to use an extender card. If I'm doing a little bit of diagnostics, you can either just probe these directly or you can put headers in here and use DuPont pins or a signal analyzer or whatever you're using for those. Now, these are grouped by function, so all of the datas are together, all the addresses are together. But sometimes it's easier to find the pin number just or the pin just by its number rather than its function. So you'll see on my next version I've I've enhance this a little bit so I have both the pin numbers and the the function. Over here it has a standard Godbout style active termination. Now in this one, this is one of my ICU jigs where I'll have a card in here that you know maybe I'm bringing it up. Uh, you know it's an old card that I'm bringing up or maybe it's a new design or something. So I have the rails on uh, these little buck converters. So I have my eight and then my plus and minus 16 volts that I can control these in either constant current mode or constant voltage mode. And also I can see how much the card is drawing. So it's really nice when you're bringing a card up either to, you know, I can crank up the, or you know, slowly bring up the voltage if I'm trying to reform capacitors, or if I'm, uh, you know, worried about a card, I can run it. I can just adjust the current so that it can't take too much current. So these are really handy. You know, I highly recommend these, uh, these little buck converters. Let's see, we can see who made them. Uh, they're little Raiden, yeah, little Raiden RK6006 buck converters. Now, I only use these boards in-house, but as I said, recently I made changes to the design. So I have some extras of these boards that I'm not going to be using because I'm switching over. This is the version 0.2, as I said, I'm gonna be switching over to the version 0.3. So those are all going to be surplus. Now, they're not going to have any documentation on them. You know, they're basically the same as the Andrew Lynch. You can get the Godbout uh, uh, active termination schematic, or I have a copy of that I can send you. But basically, there's not, not a lot going on here. So there's not a manual for it. There's a schematic, but there's not a manual uh, for this version of the board. This is the next version. This is 0 0.3. And it's pretty much the same thing. You can see, as I mentioned, I brought out all of the bus signals as just in their pin number in order and also 
still brought out by their function. And then I've rotated this 90 degrees so it's easier to see when, you know, if I'm working on this first card here, it's easy to see what the bus signals are there. Another change that I made on this is I broke the first socket off in terms of the power supply. So I have the fuses for the main board and I have the fuses for the first socket. And also I can then run the back sockets on just a power supply and use my constant current or my buck power supplies for just the front socket that I'm working on. Because what I have to do now on this one is if I've got you know a CPU card in here and I'm working on a memory card or something, have to look to see how much current the CPU card uses and then whatever the memory card uses, I have to always add to that. So that means that I have to have my current cranked up to run both cards. Where on this one, I can split off the first slot so that these buck converters are only running the first card. So I can hold my, my constant current much, much closer, my voltage for this first card while everything else is just running on the bulk power supplies. To mention, you know, there's a number of S100 backplanes available today, so I'm not convinced it's worth making these available since it's really just, you know, one more Me Too design. So let me know if you think I should put up the build files on my project page or, you know, even make these boards available for sale once I've got this one, you know, up and tested. So back to these extra three that I've got. I think there's three. There might be four. I might have another one sitting somewhere else. If you want one of these version 0.2 boards, you know, leave a comment below to save your place in the queue and then send me your contact information and your mailing address. I'll have my email down in the description and then we can work out the postage, but it's going to be whatever a flat rate, uh, you know, first class envelope costs nowadays, you know, 10 bucks or whatever it is to mail in the U.S. Okay, well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.